This video is freemium, so head to lotuseaters.com for the full video. Once uh, you decided to call it Lotus Eaters, yes. um, and it came to hiring people, what kind of things were you looking for? Uh, qualifications, actually, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, it, we, we interviewed a bunch of people, um, and you and Hugo were the two that initially we chose. I mean, obviously, it was me, John, and Callum were on a very limited budget. Mm. Uh, and uh, we just thought that you and Hugo were just good, really. You, Thank you. you know, good good talkers, good, you're well-educated. Um, you know, you seemed interested in the project, mm -hmm. so. I, I put my good performance in my interview down to a bit of a fluke because I thought there's no chance in hell I'm getting this. <laughs> so I just saw it as a bit of a day out. I was yeah. just like, well, I've been locked down for ages. Mm. I'm going to get get the coach up to, to Swindon and have a bit of a day out. The coach was completely empty. Yeah. And I, I was just like, well, I'm going to go meet Carl. I've watched his videos for quite some time. It's going to be good fun. I mean, I'm a psychologist. He's looking for a political writer. I don't stand a chance. But Well, th that's the thing. Yeah. It wasn't just political writers I was looking for. It's mm -hmm. it's people who have in-depth knowledge on a particular field. Because mm -hmm. hopefully we – like, I mean, one of the things about this office is everyone in this office is way more well-educated than I am. Like everyone's got like you know formally yeah for, yeah for, everyone has a bunch of really high formal qualifications apart from me because uh, I did computer science at university <laughs> so um, so you know it's it's just very interesting how like we have a very well educated office you know people know their stuff mm -hmm. which is great I was I was gonna say um, when I actually um, wrote in the initial email I. <laughs> I was watching one of your streams. It was the day after I finished my master's degree mm. dissertation. I was pretty wiped out. Yeah, I bet. I was, <laughs> I'd had a few gin and tonics, and I thought, um, you mentioned that you were hiring writers. I thought, oh, what the hell? I'm going mm. to give it a go. Um, didn't think I was going to get it. And um, the idea of mocking up a proper CV was completely um, insufferable to me mm. because I'd just spent three months of my life every waking hour working on my dissertation. Hmm. And I didn't want to work on another document perfecting that. So I decided, well, if you're hiring a writer, I'm going to write out the email in full and write out my full qualifications in prose as right. like a, a show and don't tell. Right. But in, in reality, it was just, I didn't want to do my CV. I can't even remember what it was like, to be honest. It was two I, years ago. Now. Mm. But yeah, I, I just thought it was funny yeah. that my mo my motivation to actually apply in the first place mm. um and sorry i think vicky I was it. with us as well yeah that's yeah. right yeah sorry yeah it wasn't it was four of mm -hmm. us um when i did actually turn up for the interview yeah. as well the the place where you said you were going to hold it was closed so i thought someone was playing a prank on me oh right yeah because i had an email from callum yeah and he didn't have I only deduced that he had any affiliation because I'd heard you mention in passing, Callum. But other than that, I had <laughs> I could have just been coordinating with a member of Antifa who was trying <laughs> to get me out to could. Swindon and beat me down. I guess you could. But no, uh, eventually I turned around and there's a big group of people there. Mm. But it was um, it's weird thinking back on it, actually. Mm. It seems like it was relatively recent, although it was two years ago. It feels like a long time to me. It does, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, one of the main things once we actually got started was getting the website working, wasn't it? Yes. Because that was quite scary. Um, yes. <laughs> because the entire business was dependent on this website. And yeah. when we launched, I think the amount of traffic was just too much. Yeah. Yeah, it just uh, keeled over on the first mm -hmm. day and then we couldn't get it back for like I don't know, a month or something, wasn't it? It was quite some time. Yeah, yeah. But it got fixed in the end. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it, it seems to be working fine now. So that's yeah. good. I mean, when when I first moved here, I didn't actually buy any furniture. I was living out of cardboard boxes because I right. kind of wanted to prepare just yeah, in yeah. case. Because it might have gone under. And, yeah. You know, it might, might have gone you know, completely under. I, I don't knows? think people realise how up in the air it was <laughs> well, when we first started. I, I saw someone the other day, he was, some project manager, and just tweeted, uh, you've got to remember, behind the scenes of everything, it's a total shit show. And that was just it. <laughs> and it was just like, yes, that's exactly right. Things run much better now, but... Yeah, they are now because we've got it all sorted. But like, mm -hmm. you know, the first few months of any new business, everything's mm. chaos, I think. It it was difficult as well yeah. because I felt like I needed to catch up with the politics side of things. Mm. I, I was going back to my apartment and then just reading and listening to politics until mm. I went to sleep for about a couple of months of living out of mm. cardboard boxes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good, good. Uh... <laughs> You've got to take it seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. 
But um, where was I? Um, yeah, so eventually we did get it working. I remember working on um, this article, if you pull it up, John, which shows just how far I've come, because look at the length of that title. Yeah, it's that is a ridiculous title. Why Trump was right to withdraw from the World Health Organization and why Biden should not reverse his decision if he becomes president. It's like the, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. You know? But that is practically the entire article itself. It is, yeah. That's like a Daily Mail level length, yeah, isn't yeah. it? That is... But yeah, that... well, that's a good article, actually. Good, good, good statement. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Although that's what I was working on. Not even sure it was going to go anywhere. Mm. And um, yeah, that was pretty much what was going on right at the beginning. It was very worrying. I mm. wasn't sure, at least until we had a working website and it stayed up for a while, whether this was going to, to go anywhere, really. <laughs> well, no one did. Well, I'm very thankful that it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So moving on to the live podcast, because I think that this is the thing that most people are familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I never actually watched this first behind the scenes one. And it, mm. it's quite funny because... I can tell that you and Callum are kind of not taking it too seriously because Callum's got a wry smile on his face the whole time. Just like, this is strange. This is amusing. Yeah, well, you know, I needed a, I needed a co-host. Callum, uh, Cal- Callum, everyone's like, oh, Callum's matured and improved so much. And it's like, yeah, because he wasn't a YouTuber or anything. Mm-hmm. I was just, he was my assistant. I was like, Callum, I need someone for the podcast. And it's like, it's you. <laughs> so, but he's you know he's he's great at it now. So. Mm. Well, yeah, he's the he's the main guy on the yeah, podcast, exactly. isn't exactly. it? So, so it's, it's basically his podcast now. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting as well to see the podcast without a set and yeah, with lots of different camera angles because well, yeah, that was before everything was built. Mm. Of course, there is a uh, a making of the Lotus Eaters on the mm. website where it shows you the building of the set if you yeah, want to yeah. watch that, but I've not included it. Um, but if we move on to the next link, John, um, this is the first one yeah. on the set itself. Um, sort of test one. Mm-hmm. Can we scroll down to the, look how young Callum looks. <laughs> it's only been two years. Like, I know. He just, he just looks, I don't know, neotinous. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's, he's become grizzled. And is it cynical. like, um, you know how US presidents, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they just age really quickly yeah, over the yeah. years. I mean, that's what podcasting does to you. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, once it formally started in the studio, it was two people. And then mm-hmm. from, I think, podcast eight, it went to three people for a while, which yeah. not many people know about. This is how I remember doing my first podcast. Um, I think mine was 11. Hmm. Um, and to be honest, it was quite scary because really? I'd, I'd done public speaking before. I, hmm. um, when I was at university, I did speaking in front of 300 people and thought nothing of it. I was just like, hmm. well, I know what I'm saying. I've, I've got the authority behind me to say it. But when yeah. it came to talking about politics, I was a little bit worried that I'd right. put my foot in it. And particularly because it's going out on the internet forever, mm. I didn't want to say something really stupid and just be forever known as that guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm. I've probably since still gained that reputation with one or two people, but <laughs> I think um, I managed to get away with it. But then looking back, a lot of my commentary isn't as insightful as I would have liked it to have been. But well, it's all a learning it could process. have been worse. Yeah, it's all I didn't seize process. up or anything. I mean, it's it's very strange to sit in front of a camera and know that Thousands of people are going to be commenting on what you're saying and doing. But it was a positive reception. Everyone was very nice, actually, when I first started, because oh, I expected people to be a lot harsher, just like, oh, Josh, you're rubbish. Go away. <laughs> but actually, they were quite supportive. So thank you very much, yeah. audience. Um, so yes, um, by Podcast 13, it went back to being a duo. I think it yeah. being three people um, in the, the structure that we had didn't necessarily work. Very Studio well, did just it? wasn't big enough for anything. Mm. I think we um, once we get a new one, we are potentially going to look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we will look at upgrading at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. It's just this, these things take time. Mm-hmm. So, um, if you move on again, John, um, this is my first one where I talked about <laughs> how the the vaccines might have been an end to COVID. I think talking about COVID actually might be quite good because a lot of the running of this business has been... During COVID. It has, yeah. Yeah. And I think actually it was 
one of the best times because we, we everyone really... was at home; they couldn't go anywhere. What are you going to do? <laughs> we've got a captive, yeah. captive audience, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah. And and we've got something to do because yeah. we, um, for whatever reason, were marked an essential business. Well, and... we're, we're media, mm-hmm. so we are, yeah, an essential business. So we were completely free to operate, and they couldn't shut us down, mm-hmm. and no one ever tried. So I was just like, right, get to the office; we're working. It, it was nice to go straight from being in education to actually having mm. a job straight away because otherwise that would have been a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. being sat at home, yeah. not being able to do anything. But I think it yeah. it helped us as well because we could we had no distractions because it, mm. the rest of the world had closed down, so we could just mm. focus on getting things working. And, and there was it, a lot to talk about as well. Mm. Like when everyone else is being oppressed, it's like, well, okay, well, you know, that's worth covering. If you enjoyed this premium preview, you can watch the full video at lotuseaters.com or click the link in the description.